are you today? I hope you're having a really good day so far. I'm really excited to be here with you. It has been a minute since I've recorded a video. I'm sorry if my energy is too high for you, but I know that I'm in a time crunch and for some reason that makes me really excited. But I have been waiting to publish this cardigan pattern to the internet for so long now and I'm finally doing it. It's just happening. I feel very confident in the math, in the details, in the layout, in the photos, in all the things. And Star Baby Moon Child is here to join us for it just as soon as I was about to stand up. <laughs> but anyway, if you're new to my channel, my name is Taylor. I come to you from Baltimore, Maryland. And this YouTube channel is a lot of different things. It is a weekly podcast series where I sit down and share with you all things that I'm making in real time. It is project feature videos where I sit down and talk about just one garment that I've knit um, or even sometimes spun yarn to knit. Uh, I do crochet on occasion, though not lately. I have a single crochet pattern out there in the world that I am in love with. Um, but this video here is to premiere my, well not premiere because I've worn it in a podcast and I've talked about it on my podcast. If you're not new to my channel, you already know that. But I am sharing with you all the finished object video pattern release extravaganza of the Oh Not Cardigan. If you watch other podcasts like The Gentle Knitter or Thousand Acre Wool, I think is the name. I wish I knew with confidence, but I'm sure that's the name of I'll link below to the couple podcasters that have tested this design. Um, and it is a bottom up cardigan using a kind of worsted slash Aran weight yarn. I actually pulled from my stash the extra skein. Um, they're sold in 50 grams. And then the skein I had left over. So you can see how much yarn I was left with when I finished knitting the smallest size. And uh, it was knit from the bottom up with pockets and a steek so that everything is knit from um, the circular method, which is, I find, the most fun, uh, personally. I'm not a super fan yet of seaming sweaters, though I've done it before and I will again. Um, but the thing that I love about knitting cables in the round is generally when you're knitting cables, there's kind of like say you do cables on like the even round, then every odd round is just to work knits. But if you're working back and forth, that's a lot of purling. So one of the things that's cool about sticking a sweater is yes, it's scary. You got to cut your yarn and um, you really can't go back after that, but you don't really have to purl so much. So that's one positive. As I mentioned, it's from the bottom up. So you separately knit your sleeves. If you're not new to my podcast, you know I knit my sleeves two inches longer than any pattern ever written. Ever written. Um, and you'd think I'd write that into my pattern, but no, I just followed standard guideline measures so that I was like in uniform with what the world expects of me. Um, I should have like told you to knit a couple more inches um, because I, I also have long arms so this might just be my problem. It might not be your problem. The pattern is written according to standard measures um, but as you can see my elbow uh, has eaten up a little bit of my sleeve. So if I were to make this again which, I, you know, I do that with every other pattern design. I might as well lay it out here with my own. If I were to make it again, I would make the sleeves longer. And I probably should make it again, but I'm on a budget and I don't have more yarn of the same weight. If I haven't mentioned already, I knit this design using Harrisville Designs Watershed Yarn. If you're not familiar with Harrisville Designs, they're one of my favorite domestic yarn producers. They are based out of New Hampshire in this like historical mill. It's all very um, pretty. I meant to visit there in 2020, but we all know how that year turned out. And their yarn is generally great. I know that they have another 
yarn that has more color varieties, if it's a worsted weight yarn, you can always substitute. This yarn in particular is a woolen spun yarn as opposed to worsted spun yarn. And the qualities of those two types of yarn are a little different. Woolen spun yarn, all of the fibers are prepared to kind of stick out in any direction. And so there's a lot of space between the fibers and a lot of air. And that means that it's generally warmer and that it is a little more insulating. If the fiber is not fine, it could be a little itchy, rustic, whatever. Um, I don't find Harrisville Designs watershed yarn to be rustic in nature. However, it's woolen spun yarn. So it's got a little bit of a woolness to it by default. I don't, I let, I'm wearing it with a t-shirt right now beneath it. So I'm totally fine wearing it next to the skin. Not everyone could say the same. Um, there was a time in my life where I was on a medication that made me more sensitive. And so I understand like everybody's different. So um, that's what I have to say about that. Sorry, my glasses are new and I'm not used to like wearing them. So I touch them a lot. Uh, let me show you the pockets. So <laughs> I'm gonna give you more close up footage than this, but I hate to kick my kitty off my lap. I'm sure you know that about me already. Um, I knit this garment to have 10 button holes that bring the buttons all the way up to the collar here. I feel like this is a very, well, somewhat, that's my dog digging in the rug. And that's a FedEx truck driving by. Oh my goodness, the sounds of this video. I'm not gonna edit it much, so please bear with me. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> but as you can see, the buttons come up to the top. I'm actually gonna kick my kitty off my lap for a moment so I can give you a better look. Let me fix my shirt. All right, so here is the cardigan along the front. I featured the globe braid, which is a cable design I featured in a bra pattern that I recently published. It's not too recent. It's been online for a minute, um, but that is the globe braid and it somewhat resembles the back panel cable, which I'll show you now. And this is kind of the showstopper of the design. It is quite pretty and there's a uniform design element to this across all sizes where as you shape the shoulder um, the raglan sleeves decrease and eventually meet up with the chart so the shaping of the design never interferes with the chart which is what makes it so simple so once you kind of meet the chart there, you're only continuing the raglan along the front and to the inside between the two sides of the sleeve. And then once you finally meet and you have just a couple stitches between the front chart and the shoulder seam, that's when you stop knitting the instructions and you continue on to do the button band. Um, there were a few test knitters who misinterpreted my meaning um, of words and rather than stopping once you had two stitches here, they stopped once they had two stitches here, which you can see depending on the size is not that much more knitting, but it does raise the kind of already high neck you can see like this kind of sits high up on the neck here. That's how I like my garments to fit. I don't feel like I want to, I don't like it when I knit a sweater. Well, I love all the sweaters I've knit, most of them, but I don't love a sweater that feels like I need a shawl with it. Why did I say it that way? Some sweaters, I feel like I need to wear a shawl with. This sweater, I kind of don't because it comes so high up on the neck. I feel like it's quite warm. But um, it sits kind of high up on the neck because the design continues up to the ribbing. And then the ribbing is about two inches uh, before the I-cord edge, which is uh, an I-cord bind off. 
and yes, yeah, so you can see on the shoulder, there's like a couple inches of stitches. It doesn't come into a complete corner unless of course you want to. And I would say um, Nicole's test knit for this turned out gorgeous. She ended up knitting until there were just a couple stitches left here. So it came to a corner which brought the yoke depth to be a little longer, which I think is always great too, because it means you just have more space for the bust, more space for your armpits to kind of breathe so that they don't felt fabric. And uh, she ended up just folding the collar over here um, before buttoning it up, which I thought looked really good. I think that it could be a good modification um, to maybe write into the pattern. But um, I just explained to you like, how she did that she just kept going with the decreases but if you were to just follow the pattern as it's written it should turn out something like this it is somewhat of an untraditional collar I think because it has this kind of shape to it and I think that the woolen spun yarn makes it a little bit malleable or I should say like once you kind of steam block it it kind of stays there it's not slippery like a like a superwash yarn I wouldn't recommend a steeped cable design with a superwash yarn uh, there is like you can see the inside steek I didn't mention any methods of securing the steek because I didn't I don't feel like with a woolen spun yarn it's necessary but of course any standard way of securing stitches you're welcome to do um, but there's like this kind of sharp corner here that rounds itself out as you apply the button band and that's what gives it this very pretty shape at the top um, I chose to make a button band that's a little non-traditional. I like the fact that my buttons are of a greater volume and a smaller size. And I positioned them a little further away from the side, a little closer to the edge. And then I didn't match up the button band to cover fully um, because I wanted to give myself a little bit more ease. And uh, I would say the cables kind of eat up a little bit of the ease to the garment so I wanted to add it back in through the button band and I like the robust kind of firm and sturdy quality of that I-cord edge so it really just makes it look like that I-cord goes down the center and the buttons just beside it. So buttons, of course, are optional. You don't even have to do buttons or button band. I like the versatility of securing it closed or opening it up. But here it is, you can see closed. It's a fitted garment. It's not oversized. Of course, you could make it a size larger if you want it to fit more loose. But here are the pockets. And I'll show you the back again. I might just insert an image here for you to see the back a little bit better. I'm kind of recording this video on the fly after work. It is a Thursday. I tried to record this video before I started my new job and I fumbled through it and made so many small videos. I just couldn't even watch them back when I tried editing. Um, Shippy's letting me know she wants to say hello. Is that right? No, she doesn't. She's just playing me. But this is the oh knot. You see how the neck kind of stands up a little bit? I like that about it. It's like kind of like a it's like a popped collar, but also a no collar sweater. I don't know. I mean, it's probably not for everyone. That's okay. Um, I really like it. And I feel like, um, yeah, I'm not bothered by that. But it stands up in the back, which I think is really snuggly and warm. So I want to know what you think. Let me know in a comment below um, whether you're planning to knit it or not, 
or you know what your general thoughts are. I'm gonna open up the buttons a little bit because I feel like it's kind of stuffy wearing it totally closed. I want to thank you so much for watching this video. You do not know how much it means to me to know that you're all here and that you're watching and that you somewhat enjoy the content I create. I feel re-inspired to make more content for you all just by sitting down and doing this today as quick and um, maybe unprofessional as it might be. I'm just doing my best and um, there's a lot happening. I have a new job. It takes a lot of learning. By the end of the day, I'm just kaputs. I don't even have time to knit anymore. I have been roller skating. It's been good for my mental health to get outside, breathe fresh air, move my body, make these endorphin things I've heard about. That's what I've been doing, which makes it really hard to create content for you guys at the same time. So I feel like I'm juggling two loves right now on top of a new job. And I don't want to give up pattern writing. It's something I feel like I don't have the capacity for right now while I'm still learning my new occupation but I hope to come out with more new patterns sometime soon. I have a new bra vision um, that I plan to create in the near future. I just have to decide on the yarn. I started and I just hated the color. I, I think I'm just gonna dye it. I think I'm gonna dye the yarn and then make it with it then. But anyway, I digress. I am rambling a lot and again i just want to thank you so much for watching if you want to find me on social media my name is taylor e owen on ravelry instagram or twitter if you want to find me on tiktok i am taylor knits and i again want to thank you so much for watching i hope you have a wonderful day and that you take care also i have a promo code for you as a viewer of my youtube channel and to thank you for watching all the way to the end i'm going to offer a promo code on the screen here for you to save some discount which I haven't even decided yet but I know I need to thank you monetarily uh, for watching and for being a viewer and a subscriber if you haven't already do please subscribe um, and just thank you so much again for watching have a wonderful day and take